Hi, I'm Vicky of Vicky Myers Creations. I'm just trying to squeeze into shot here. Um, I want to share with you today how to make this cork crossbody bag. It's super easy to make. I've got all the instructions for you in the following video, but I do start once you've already cut out your pattern pieces and attached your fusible fleece to the cork and interfacing to your lining. When attaching fusible fleece to your cork, you may need, you will have to hold the iron for the good 15 seconds as recommended and you may need to press it a little, little bit additionally from the front just to get it to adhere. So this bag, this bag is designed around what I need right now. So what I need right now is a bag that I can fit my wallet in, my keys, my mobile, hand sanitizer and face masks unfortunately, that, but that's the world we're in at the moment. It's got a swivel lock, let me show you that. It's got an adjustable shoulder strap and I've used cap rivets which I think provide a professional touch to a bag. The inside is dead simple, there's no internal pockets at all, it's a really easy bag to make, it's a good starter bag, you're going to box the corners. I do have other videos so um, if you want to add internal pockets just check my other resources online on my blog or on the YouTube and you will find um, instructions on how to make a zipper pocket or a slip pocket and you can jazz this up to meet your needs. Enjoy making your cork bag. Place your fabrics right sides together. This is for the main bag. I've used clover clips because they don't leave pinholes in the cork. Now you're going to use a half inch seam allowance and sew down the side of your bag. Along the bottom and up the other side. I suggest doing a test piece just to check the tension and how you say machine works with the fusible fleece and the cork. You may find a Teflon foot or a walking foot really helpful. So now it's going to box the corners by folding in the cut out square so the edges meet. As you can see this is forming a base to the bag. So just align your side seam with your bottom seam and open out your seam allowance and clip in place before stitching. So machine stitch that, back stitching at each corner. Right, let's turn this bag the right side out. So this is the main body of the bag, external fabric, which is the cork. So I'm just going to push those corners out. There we go. There's the outer main body of the bag. So now we're going to create, I don't know what you call them, mini straps to attach D-rings to the back of the bag. So I'm pressing my cork pieces as per the pattern in half. I'm just going to use some cotton here. As a to protect the iron and then fold, open out and fold in the outer edges to that crease you just made in the middle. This is the exact same process you're going to follow when you make the main strap for the bag. Press again. Cork's not very easy to, doesn't really like creasing, but you, it will. And then we're going to fold in half again. I'm going to hold in place with clover clips and then I'm going to top stitch down each side of this piece. I found I did need a walking foot for this because the cork was facing the presser foot. You could use a Teflon foot or you could put a little bit of masking tape under the bottom of your ordering sewing machine foot if your sewing machine is struggling to cope. So there we have it. There's my D-ring, just going to thread it through and I'm going to place that on the back of the bag just in from the seam and side seam about a quarter of an inch half an inch in baste these in place now we're going to make the closing flap so place your pieces right sides together again we're going to use clover clips to hold in place so i've got my lining fabric and my cork fabric both with a so stitch as per seam allowance trim your corners then turn right sides out press and then you're going to top stitch all around the edge. Once you've done that we're going to attach the swivel clip. 
So you need to get your pieces and mark where you need to cut through. So I'm marking essentially three quarters of an inch up from the closing bottom of the flap. I'm using the pronged piece as my guide and a pencil to mark it, which um, just about, you can just about see it. And then we're going to cut out that marked line. I've got some very sharp scissors here, holding the fabric just to get the first snip through. Now, make, I advise cutting your hole too small to start with and then making it a little bit bigger. If you cut it too big, you, you can't undo that. So start small, and if you need to, cut a little bit bigger. Take your time over this so that you get the size right. So I've gone through one there and now I'm going to go through the lining fabric. As you can see I'm not rushing at all. Now beauty of cork fabric of course is that it doesn't fray but with your cotton lining it does so I will apply, apply some fray. Fray stop. Is it fray stop? Anyway, stuff you can buy to stop things fraying. So I'm just going to check that with my pieces to see if the size is correct. I've made it too small, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'll just check my measurements and make sure I keep it central as I make it that little bit bigger. Once you've got the size right and you've checked it, we're going to apply that fray stop to the back of the fabric. I've not used this before, it, it feels a bit like glue to be honest, but anything helps. So once your fray stop glue has dried, we're going to insert the lock. So insert the prongs through to the back. You can just see them there. Then attach the back plate and press the prongs out. There we go, that was nice and easy. So we're going to attach the closing flap to the main body of the bag. I'm just going to baste it in place. Obviously apply it from side seam to side seam and stitch in place. Now we're going to work out the position of the other part of the lock. So we need to make sure the enclosing, the closing flap is central and we've allowed for the seam allowance. So once you've done that, you can mark through or place your plate through the other side. Align it carefully. And then we're going to mark through where we need to cut to insert the other half of the twist lock. Now I'm using a seam ripper here because it's only a very small cut we need to make. Obviously you need to make these marks parallel to the base of your bag. You don't want to insert your piece um, skew with, which I suspect mine's a millimetre out. It's out fractionally, unfortunately. But no one's ever going to notice, to be honest, when the bag is fully finished and I'm wearing it and using it. So you need to put the back plate on and close the prongs out. And this is how your bag closes. Nice and neat, another professional touch to your bag. There you go, there you can see the prongs pressed right out. So make your lining as you did for the outer bag. So side seams, bottom seam, then boxy corners. Now we're going to insert the outer bag into the lining so that the right sides of the two fabrics face each other. Align your side seams and press your seam allowances out just to help reduce bulk when you're sewing the bag together. Again, I'm using clover clips to hold everything in place. So make sure you do push your outer bag, bag really far down into your lining. Now we are gonna sew around the top here, apart from around the front. We'll pin it to make sure it all fits snugly. Clover clip it so it all fits snugly. 
because you can always adjust one of your side seams if one's slightly bigger than the other. I quite often do that. I'm not the most millimetre precise sewer. Anyway, this fits beautifully. So we're going to stitch from an inch from one side round, all round. You can see I've left this turning gap. So we're now we're going to pull through. Bit of a wriggle, but pull your cork out. It's coming through. Here's my turning flap. Turning flap. A closing flap at the back. Right, turn the lining out. I'm going to push that into the bag, push out the corners at the bottom. Push the lining right in. So now we are going to turn in that turning gap and hold in place with the clover clips. And then we're going to top stitch around the top of the bag. We're just going to hold the lining in place and close that turning flap. When you get to the back of the bag, you are just top stitching the main bag. So now we've done that, we're going to make the straps, cut out as per the pattern. Then I'm going to use some glue tack just to hold in the short edge. I'm going to pin that, hold that with clover clips, whilst glue sets for both sides of the strap. And then, like we did for the small pieces of strap. I'm going to press it in half, open it out, fold it in and then fold it in again. I'm going to hold that with clover clips and I'm going to top stitch all around this long strap. So as you can see I've already threaded the strap through the slider and used double cap rivets to attach it. Now I'm going to thread The strap through one of the D-rings. Back through the slider. So here we go through the other D-ring and then I can show you how to insert the double cap rivets. So my bag just wouldn't, not my bag, my sewing machine wouldn't sew through this level of fabric. So I'm using a leather hole punch and I'm punching through. Then I'm going to insert the double cap rivet through the hole, attach the other side. And then I'm going to use the tools, I can't remember what they're called unfortunately, and give it a good whack to join the two pieces together successfully. Now I'm going to do the other side and put in two double cap rivets. Double cap rivets are a brilliant um, addition to bag making skills. They really help if your sewing machine can't cope through layers. And they also look really professional. And then when this is in, our bag is finished. Do subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got lots of different uh, videos showing lots of different bag making techniques. I'll just bang this together. There we go. Just shake that thing correctly. One finished cork crossbody bag. Super easy. Do have a go at making one yourself. And don't forget to subscribe below. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.